You know, osteoporosis is a real concern as we age. And while we all know calcium builds stronger bones, there is another key ingredient. Registered dietitian Andrea Hallwagner joins us this morning. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning. First of all, let's talk about um, building stronger bones. Calcium, we're talking about other ingredients, but there's other things you should do to build stronger bones as well. Absolutely. I had it explained to me once that if you think of a stool with three legs mm -hmm. on it, and if one leg um, consists of calcium and vitamin D okay. for strong bones, second leg being weight-bearing exercise such as walking, resistance training, okay. any kind of exercise that loads weight. Good. And that third prong on that stool is hormone balance. So that becomes okay. a little trickier for women as we go through menopause. I want to focus on the calcium and vitamin D because this is a pair you have to keep together. People sometimes think, I'm taking calcium, I'm building stronger bones. That's not the case. Absolutely. So you really want to think of calcium and vitamin D as being sort of partners in crime. Mm -hmm. And so what calcium does is it adds that um, structure to the bone. Vitamin D increases calcium absorption by about double. Okay. So it's really important to get enough vitamin D so that you really, your body does get that calcium into the bone. Okay, a calcium, let's first of all talk, talk about that. Foods with calcium that we should be including in our diet. Big sources of calcium are of course things like milk, yogurt, cheese, calcium fortified soy milks, um, calcium fortified rice, almond milks, all uh, mm -hmm. orange juices, but the key is making sure that those are fortified because they don't naturally contain calcium. Okay, that's calcium. Vitamin D though, I don't think people know the foods that might be rich in vitamin D. Yes, vitamin D is big when we look at foods like fish. Um, again, milk is fortified, soy milks are fortified with vitamin D. Uh, we also th see things like fortified margarines. But vitamin D is actually quite limited in our food supply, so you're not going to see it widespread in a lot of places. We do synthesize some in our skin, but through the winter months, it's mm. tricky. Right, and the course, sunshine vitamin, of course. Yeah, and of course in the summer, when we're putting sunscreen on, that actually blocks your body's ability to make vitamin D. So this is a case where we have to talk about supplements. I would say this is a case where um, you know food usually supplies us with the bulk of what we need but when it comes to vitamin D um, even Health Canada with the Canadian Food Guide really does suggest a vitamin D supplement for those that are 50 plus. Okay that's vitamin D what about a supplement for calcium uh, what if I feel I'm getting enough in my food should I still think about a calcium supplement you know what if you're getting three servings of calcium rich foods um, per day then your calcium levels are gonna look good mm -hmm. one serving would be a cup of milk three quarters of a cup of yogurt or about an ounce and a half of cheese which is about three slices for most people okay. so if you get three of those in the course of a day calcium is good I would still probably take a multivitamin that includes some vitamin D there though oh, yeah what if I have some issues though with uh, dairy products and milk and everything else. Talk to me about maybe some specific calcium supplements I should be taking, how much I should be taking, the international units, stuff like that. Sure, and if, if, still if you're getting, let's say, three cups of calcium fortified soy milk or rice milk, your calcium will still be in check. Okay. However, if those are not appealing options for you, then definitely you're looking for, um, if you're under 50, then you're looking for 1,000 milligrams of calcium per day in a supplement form. If you're over 50, we're looking for 1,200. Okay. And if your doctor has told you that you have either osteopenia, which is the sort of the beginning stages of osteoporosis or brittle bones, Right. Or if you have osteoporosis, we're looking for 1,500 milligrams of calcium per day. Here's another thing. <laughs> um, calcium sometimes affects people's digestive systems. It does. What sometimes people don't realize is they say, okay, I'm not getting enough calcium, I'm going to take a calcium pill, and they end up constipated. Mm -hmm. um, what you want to do if you are prone to constipation or if that has happened to you is get a calcium supplement that includes magnesium. Okay, magnesium, because that helps with the constipation. It I know, does. I know it's early in the morning, but people it have does. these issues. Yeah, It okay. does. Magnesium has more of a laxative-based effect, whereas okay. calcium can sort of constipate. So that together, um, calcium-magnesium combo can really help to hope negate that effect for you. One more thing on vitamin D. It really has become, it's in the news so much about the importance of taking vitamin D. We're talking about it here for osteoporosis and strong bones, but it is beneficial in so many other areas we've heard about. It is. It's sort of been in the nutritional spotlight um, in the last couple of years for things like um, multiple sclerosis, for things like prevention and treatment of certain types of cancer. So I really think we're just beginning to understand all of the important roles for vitamin D. So having a little bit extra coming from a multivitamin or again if you're over 50 plus a 400 international unit okay. supplement per day is absolutely the way to go. Wow, vitamin D. Make sure it is in your diet in some form. Andrea, thanks for coming in. Thanks for you having me. You know what, for more nutrition information, make sure you contact Andrea at her website. That is healthstandnutrition.com.